The AI race is heating up. Microsoft announcing a surprise event for tomorrow where the company is expected to reveal a highly anticipated chat GPT related service. The news coming just minutes after Alphabet's Google unveiled its own competitor in the space, Bard AI. CEO Sundar Pichai telling employees it will be all hands on deck to test the service. Other names in the space on a tear of late. C3 AI, AI up 6% today is now up 165% uh, above its 52 week low from late no, de, late December. Excuse me. Investors getting excited by the company's generative chat technology. Kingsley Crane is following the AI craze for Catacord Genuity. Kingsley, great to have you with us. Um, there aren't too many pure plays out there. Are any of the pure plays worth playing? Right. So for C3, I think it makes sense that the recent excitement around AI in the marketplace would lead to interest in C3. Uh, and their announcement of a generative AI suite is furthering this enthusiasm. Uh, they have something called a model-driven architecture. So as soon as new technologies and algorithms are improved or released, they can build those directly into their approach. So uh, we like the announcement. I think we're a bit cautious on the potential for that to drive near-term growth. In terms of uh, in terms of the notion of AI in companies like Microsoft or a, an Alphabet investing in AI, how and I know you don't analyze those stocks, but from your point of view, is this still nascent in terms of how much it could contribute to a big company like that? Because this is the buzzword. This is you know on the conference calls, this is what investors want to hear, and there's a certain you know amount of money that's being thrown at these stocks by investors thinking that AI is the next big thing. Are we too far off from that point though? I think it's exciting because we are really early. Uh, if you're a customer facing, you're scrambling to form a strategy that leverages generative AI to scale how you interact with customers. If you're a tool used in a data science process or an infrastructure provider, you're really well positioned in the markets coming toward you. But I think that could be over the course of multiple years. Kingsley, it's Tim. Thanks for joining us. Does Google's announcement today, Google, who we know has been spending aggressively in this space for a long time, does this, does this unlock value at Google? I mean, do you, do you see that this is something that actually crystallizes where I, I could make an argument that Google has uh, significant infrastructure here to deploy? Right. I do think this will unlock value for them when ChatGPT was, um, you know, recently made this partnership with Microsoft. Um, we did not take the stance that it would create uh, a significant moat versus another company like Google. Uh, and we still have indication that they've developed a moat from ChatGPT. And I certainly wouldn't bet against Google to compete with Microsoft in AI. Do you think, um, Kingsley, looking out, you know, since it is so nascent five years from now, um, will these companies that you cover uh, that are pure plays, will they exist independently or do you think they will be bought by other companies? And do you think that maybe the fiercest competitor has yet to even be formed? Right. I think that there's still room for plenty of companies to operate individually and contribute to this ecosystem. Um, you know, in some cases, we could see some transformational M&A. I think some of the cloud providers have been more cautious about acquiring a large company like a Mongo or a Datadog because of, um, because of a lack of scale or lack of uh, ability to integrate that asset. And so with the advent of AI, that, that could change. Uh, and yeah, it's totally feasible that, that a company um, could, um, could come out of the woodwork that we have not seen yet in terms of um, dominating the AI space. And I'm just curious, are there companies out there who are touting AI? I mean, I'm sure you track all this, even if you don't cover the companies per se, where AI is very loosely used. And it's just used to get investors' attention. I feel like we're in this space now where it's a buzzword. And so if you can say AI in some way, shape, or form, then you're going to say AI, even though it may not be AI as strictly defined as in terms of the kind of companies that you cover. Right. I think it's really easy to describe uh, a company as an AI company today. And, you know, investors need to be careful uh, the approach that's being taken by, you know, the company that they're investing in. And if AI is a differentiator for that company, uh, or if it's not, you know, a lot of times if the company is saying that it has superior AI, it, it, you know, it could be a warning sign. It, you know, you need to look if they have a better data set, because oftentimes uh, the size and the, the quality of the data set is one of the best predictors of the success of AI. Yep. Kingsley, great to have you with us. Thank you. Thanks again. Kingsley Crane.
I mean, can I make one point? Right can I just yeah. make one point? Yes, we just spent a lot of time talking about two situations that seem just out, so stupid to me and kind of encapsulate what's going on in the market right now. The Bed, okay. bed Bath and Beyond right. and then <laughs> this C3 AI literally gaining 200 percent in a month. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is a company that went public in late 2021. It was at down 95 percent from its highs. Okay, this was just a month and a half ago. And now we're talking about it with a three billion dollar uh, market cap here. This company loses a lot of money. I, listen, Tom Siebel, I'm sure he's a great operator and, and CEO and, and this or whatever. I'm just saying this is more about what investors are doing. It's not like like your point is a great one. Okay, this company is called C3.AI. Right. Okay, they right. have and that idea AI. two years. Yeah. 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 That's got to be worth it. Okay, yeah. like, it's fantastic. <laughs> If we start seeing companies put .ai at the end right. of the company, we've been through that. We know what happens here. So I'm just saying that we're kind of in Sillyville here a little bit. And the one last point I'll just say, if we see all these bigger companies, these publicly traded companies, kind of spraying some money around, 250 in this company, 250 in that, mm -hmm. that's probably a better way to do this. To your point is that, you know, invest in these companies. Don't buy them right now. The regulatory environment probably doesn't um, kind of lend itself to that. And that's what Microsoft did with OpenAI. They made a billion dollar investment. And now they're doing this. Now they're integrating uh, same thing. Well, I mean, it's not Bed Bath & Beyond, but here's the thing. 103 million shares outstanding, 103 million shares traded today. It's just wow. being whipped around, and it can go higher, sure. He makes a point he wouldn't short it. I wouldn't either. That's a little dangerous. Yeah. Um, the more you know, when you hear superior AI, it probably isn't superior AI. <laughs> I thought that was funny. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, listening to Dan, I'm not quite as exercised about it, but it, it just reminded me of everyone who was pointing out that they were either a dot-com or, or a blockchain or something. But, but Or something's a fintech company. Like, every financial was a fintech company right. when, in fact, they were a consumer credit business and you had a lot of exposure to something that actually was their core business.